hello hello welcome to my channel guys uh, thank you for joining in I wanted to thank everybody today uh, for the many positive uh, reactions that I've received for my latest videos thank you thank you very much uh, of course uh, all for the glory of Jesus Christ so God bless you everyone thank you for watching uh, today guys I wanted to share a very interesting topic with you and uh, the topic that I want uh, to teach about is about our friend here a very famous Arabian poet of his time the very celebrated Amrul Qais Amrul Qais uh, Amrul Qais is a, uh, a well-known uh, poet uh, and was called also the father uh, of the Arabian literature uh, our friend Amrul Qais uh, he was also uh, a son of one of the latest kings or you can say the last king of Yemen and uh, that was in the early 6th century uh, why did I want to teach about this topic today well the reason is because we want to expose Islam right <laughs> we want to expose the Arabian fake prophet Muhammad yep it's one of those days again guys <laughs> you know me right so uh, the reason for this guys is because Muhammad the fake prophet of Islam he stole a lot of work of this very well known our very famous friend Amr al Qais so let me uh, tell you a little uh, bit information share a little bit information with you about our friend Amrul Qais like I said Amrul Qais he lived in the 6th century he died very young as you see and he's the author of the one of the Mu'allaqat an anthology of Arabic literature attributed to seven famous poets and even the Arabian prophet Muhammad he highly praised Amrul Qais for his poetic skills so Muhammad was really interested in his works he was praising him and even the cousin of Muhammad <laughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib even he praised Amrul Qais for his poetic skills as you see guys even the so-called illiterate prophet knew about Amr al Qais, his works, his famous works in the pagan Arabic world. Right? Amr al Qais was also the son of the last king of Kinda, which is today's Republic of Yemen. And as you see, he said he was born around the year 501. Now, to show you how uh, Muhammad was uh, stealing the work of Amr al Qais, because Muhammad was really interested in his work, we can find many traces back in the Quran, right? Uh, Muslims are always proud about about uh, the very beautiful poetry in the Quran. Don't they always brag about the linguistic miracles and whatnot, right? And uh, if you open up the Quran. The Quran itself so sounds like a rap song, right? With a lot of nice poetry in it. And we know now why, right, guys? <laughs> Let me show you what I'm trying to talk about. Uh, before uh, I uh, will show you uh, the same work that Muhammad stole from Amr al Qais, from his poets, let me uh, show you how people were uh, accusing Muhammad in the Quran itself. So when Muhammad came with the ayahs, people started accusing Muhammad for calling him nothing but a poet. Yes, Muhammad was called a poet. 
Nay, he has invented, forged, nay, he is a poet. Chapter 21 in Ayah 5. Chapter 37, Ayah 36, it says, Are we forsake our gods? So here the pagans are saying, Should we forsake our gods for a poet who was possessed with the jinn? A mad poet? Majnoon, right guys? Remember the word mad, crazy in the Arabic means Majnoon. Majnoon, poet. And that was also uh, a very well-known nickname of Muhammad. He was called uh, Majnoon, right? Crazy. And Maj Majnoon comes from someone who is possessed by jinn. Do you see the connection? Majnoon, jinn. Crazy prophet. He is a poet from who we await a misfortune of time. Chapter 52, Ayah 30. And Muhammad is trying to defend himself in the Quran. And he says, and the poets, the perverse deviators, follow them. And it's not the speech word of a poet. So the Quran is not, <laughs> Muhammad is saying, the Quran is not the speech of a poet. So he's trying to defend that he is not a poet. <laughs> Because they were accusing him, right? And here, the so-called Allah, but deep inside we know very well that Allah and Muhammad are the very same person who speak in the Quran. But that's off topic. And we have not taught him poetry, nor is it befitting for him, for Muhammad, right? We have not taught Muhammad poetry. So as you see, guys, uh, Muhammad was accused and Muhammad was trying to defend his many accusations for being a false, possessed, majnoon poet, basically a fake liar. And to show you what a poet is also, the, uh, the, the word in, in Arabic, sha'ar, a poet, if you go to a uh, dictionary, classic Arabic uh, dictionary, here you see that Someone who is writing poetry is uh, accused as false or lying because of the many lies in poetry. Do you see that, guys? So, yeah, uh, a poet is, uh, is someone who is trying to invent lies and he puts it in his very beautiful poetry. <laughs> to show you what, uh, uh, what I'm talking about, uh, I came across uh, many works of Amr al-Qais that Muhammad copied directly into the Quran itself, into the heart of the Quran itself. For example, here you can see from Quran chapter 54 ayah 1 where Muhammad stole directly from the works of Amr al-Qais, the well-known poet, uh, many direct sentences from his well-known poets. Al Sawa and Shak al Qamar. This is guys from chapter 54, ayah 1. Let me show you. Al Sawa and Shak al Qamar. The hour has come near. Do you see that guy? Do you see how Muhammad is directly copying and pasting in the Quran from Amr al Qais his works? And from the same chapter, we can also find direct copy pastings into the Quran from the work of uh, Amr al-Qais chapter 54 ayah 29 chapter 54 ayah 31 chapter 54 ayah 46 as we mentioned earlier 54 ayah 1 again for the second time chapter 21 no different uh, chapter chapter 21 Ayah 96, here again we find works of Amr al-Qais. What is the work of Amr al-Qais doing in the Quran, guys? Chapter 37, Ayah 61. Chapter 93, Ayah 1, 2. So as you see, guys, please do some research about this to show you that I'm not lying uh, and that you can see for yourself how Muhammad was stealing poetry from our friend our famous friend Amr al-Qais and we know that Muhammad 
stole uh, a lot a lot of stories from legion stories because he was accused in the Quran over and over right uh, nothing but legions steals from people before him asatir al awwalin right that's what it says in the arabic asatir al awwalin many accusations and to show you that the works of amr al qais still exist today we can even find one of his poetry books from amr al qais on even amazon.com so you can still buy uh, his very well known poetry books you see that guys Amr al Qais you, you can buy even that book if you like this one is translated into the French so yeah guys what can we what can we uh, say more right Muhammad was accused over and over to steal works of others Asatir al awwalin legion stories Muhammad stole also from Christians uh, like the seven sleeper story of uh, Ephesus right the seven sleepers of Ephesus a very well known tale written in the year 250 by a Christian Aramaic uh, priest and also from the Talmud uh, from the Talmud Sanhedrin Mishnah uh, Four, five, chapter four, five, uh, where we can find in the Quran for it's ordained for the Bani Israel. If you kill one man, it is as if you killed whole mankind. So you see, guys, uh, we try to show you in this video how Muhammad, the Arabian prophet, was nothing but a thief, a fake prophet who could not. Uh, do anything but steal works of others and this is why we find so, such uh, poet traces in the Quran please guys do some background information because this is very interesting and share this video and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for watching and God bless